I'm, I don't know that I'm even barely surviving. If you're not happy with your work environment, you should leave. If I went by Robert's logic, I wouldn't be able to work anywhere. Okay, but this guy probably doesn't hate the kind of job he has. It's just easy to hate a place when you're not getting paid and have to buy the place's groceries. This man isn't your personal shopper. Why don't you get off your butt, take some responsibility, and, you know, stop acting more pompous than Fraser Crane. Seriously, guys, Robert's like the epitome of a rich douchebag. The only difference is he doesn't actually have any money. What's crack a lagging everybody? It's Thundros finally getting off his lazy ass and making part four of the series. But we're here to make fun of Robert, you know, because the dude just constantly makes a donkey of himself. On top of that, there's just a huge amount of problems with the way he runs his business. Yeah, I'm never gonna get over this one. $700 is, uh, too rich for my blood. Before we start, though, the like goal is going to be 500 likes for this video. And normally this is where I'm like, oh man, you guys are never gonna hit it. But let's face it, y'all gonna hit that like Chris Brown. But let's get to what you guys came here for and continue making fun of the men with the most slappable face. Are you taking the piss or is this just an abuse for you what are you doing to these people well robbing them blind for one but that's just the tip of the iceberg for this idiot i mean this man is a monster he doesn't pay his employees and then went out and bought a hundred thousand dollar motor coach his words not mine i call it a glorified rv but if you say that to his face uh it triggers him and if you already think he's annoying it's like equipping a megaphone to a minion this is their livelihoods this is your responsibility rob's world and you're in an RV, a hundred grand. Everybody is disgusted that you live in that thing. They really are. It's fantastic that his employees are telling them that uh, they're disgusted by the way Robert lives. But can we talk about how ugly that RV probably looks to guests? Like, just imagine you roll up to this hundred-year-old mansion and all you can see is this giant freaking boat of a car. Like, it's an eyesore to the entire property. To be fair, so is Robert, but he's the owner, so he kind of has to be here. Well, that is not the That is, that not is part the case. of the issue. But we are was... surrounded by wealth and reminded of poverty at the same time because of that RV. Well, it's a symbol. To me, that RV is a symbol. And it's a symbol that you're separating yourself from everybody else. Forget the RV. I mean, I'm not saying it isn't a huge sign of wealth, but at the same time, dude, you've had to make lavish dinners for him and his friends. Meanwhile, this lady's probably had to serve all of them. I mean, you guys are just getting to screw you everywhere you go. You know, I shouldn't say sign of wealth, though, because Robert and Avi are a few hundred thousand dollars in debt from this place. At this rate, they're gonna have to downsize to an SUV. I'd be very careful about coming down on me too hard. I'm telling you exactly how I feel and how let me, the let people me that I work I with feel. feel. Let me tell you how I feel. Show of hands, does anyone actually give a damn about how Robert feels? Oh, look at that. Literally nobody's raising their hand. Gotta love his piss poor little threat back there. You better be very careful how you come down on me. Like, what are you gonna do? Fire him from the job you're not paying him for? I mean, have fun paying his unemployment, bro. Tell when me. you're in your fucking kitchen all day long and you're on the goddamn internet instead of actually trying to perfect a menu and get a menu, how long did I ask for you to make a menu of your own? I love that he's standing here popping off on him like he's stocking the kitchen. The dude can only cook what you actually have. You don't get to go to the grocery store and say, oh, don't worry, I'll pay you guys for this tomorrow. I think Robert's trying to bluff him here like he has any actual power, because you know if the chef walks out, Robert's screwed. His cooking ability is so low, he'd probably burn cereal. If I'm on the computer, usually it's I'm trying to research menus, oh, research please. ingredients. Give me a break. I've given you plenty of breaks. I work very long days, yeah. and I haven't been paid in three weeks. Bro, if I'm not getting paid, I would just walk out. And before anybody says, well, the job market might be tough, if you're not making any money, you're wasting your time. Plus, working for Robert kind of looks like a two out of 10 experience. He doesn't really uh, deserve employees. If I ever have the misfortune of having a boss that's half as much of a bag of female hygiene products as Robert, I swear I will walk out at the most inconvenient time for them. There's only been one paycheck that I got on time. Almost the entire staff is ready to walk out because they are tired of not getting paid. Anything to say? No, we, we do things. Oh, please. Real big man talking down to his employees. The second Gordon chimes in goes quieter than the world's smallest violin. Like, Robbie, you folded faster than a chair on the 4th of July. You remember the purple guy from Inside Out? I'm pretty sure he has more courage than this dude. On the upside, when they make a live action of it in 20 years, he's a shoe-in for the role. He's just perfectly pathetic. Tired and half the team is broke. I'm beyond angry. I'm beyond pissed off. But this sounds like such a pleasant workplace. I mean, yeah, you're not making any money, but hey, you're fulfilling your dream of being a chef. And sometimes fulfilling your dreams just means being flat broke. Believe me, I'd know. Well, I just got a new asshole ripped to me. Gordon says that I live in a fantasy world and that, uh, 
I live in a million dollar RV while our, our, our employees can't pay their bills. And Yeah, how dare Gordon Ramsay get mad at you for starving your employees while you sit in a $200,000 mobile home? I mean, it's not like you were talking down to them and food is needed to live. He has no right to be mad that you're acting like the poor man's Jeff Bezos. Anyone else notice that it looks like Avi is just getting up? I mean, Gordon just asked them to make him lunch. It's at least 11 o'clock right now. Like, Avi, what's your geriatric ass doing late at night? Probably nothing. Get up and actually do something for your hotel. All of this kind of stuff because we don't pay them on time and they're all complaining that they haven't gotten their paychecks this time either. Oh, they haven't. Yeah, why are they complaining that they haven't gotten paid? I mean, it's just money, guys. Calm down. I mean, it's not like you plan to make a living off it. Even Avi's like, uh, well, I mean, you haven't paid them. There might actually be a rational person between these two. Hello, Liar, how, are how are you? you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Come on in. Quick context, but Gordon is coming to see somebody that used to work for Robert. But somehow the cameras are already inside her house, and I don't think I have ever heard a more rehearsed hello. Hello! Like, if Gordon Ramsay showed up to your house, you'd probably be straight geeky, not like, hello! Give me a little insight to what it was like actually working there. I have to say, it was a very interesting five years. Uh, things were going very, very well, and then all of a sudden, two years into it, they stop answering the phone. First of all, we need to give her a round of applause for dealing with five years of Robert. Second, who cares about answering the phone? Just go knock on their RV. I mean, I guess they could drive off, but they gotta come back to the business eventually. Robert, I think, thought he was too important to answer the phone or he was too busy doing other things. So preoccupied and distracted. Very, in very preoccupied and distracted and not focused at all on maintaining his own business. Wow. Gordon's just sitting there giving her Owen Wilson's signature line, wow, like it's a huge surprise. I mean, he watched this idiot in action. The inn could be burning down around him and he'd still be like, look, I don't think the chef is working to his potential. Were you paid on time? Um, not very often. Wow. Um, Did you ever use your own money to buy things? All the time and then I would have to demand to be paid back or we weren't gonna open it for dinner. Gordon, what are you doing? This feels more like an interrogation. You know the answer to these questions and she, you're just making her relive this trauma. She doesn't want to think about a time when she wasn't getting paid or had to buy stuff for the business. This was episode one of the series. Were you really that concerned about ratings? I guarantee this woman had nightmares that night flashing back to when she worked at that business. It's insane. Barbara's been short of checks a lot. She's barely earning $100 a week. And yeah, and he like... won't pay her. And then if he had a private party with all his friends, he didn't tip them. You're kidding me. No. Yeah, no, I'll admit that I've been pretty hung up on that too, but it's really weird how classist Robert acts for somebody with no money. Like, first he's not gonna pay them, and then he's gonna teabag them by hosting a party in front of them. Meanwhile, Avi and himself are already a few hundred thousand dollars in debt. Like, this is the weirdest form of classism I've ever seen. I'd like to be a fly on that wall, but... Would, would, <laughs> would you come back and walk through the doors to have a look at it at the end of the week and just... Come back for dinner? No. No, just one go or? No, I'm not even interested in getting in. I, I just fear getting in one more battle with Ari or Robert. Girl, you totally need to go back. All they're gonna do is vaguely threaten you. Like, uh, you, you better not push me. Especially with Gordon there, he'll fold like an egg. Like, I get not wanting to return to a toxic work environment, but that sounds like a 10 out of 10 experience for you. The old chef left because she couldn't stand it. And the current chef looks like he's ready to walk too. I don't know why he hasn't already. I mean, this place is basically Casa del Crap Hole. Like, Kardashian family get-togethers probably have less dysfunction. If he doesn't walk out before the end of the week, this entire reality show is fake. I wonder if everyone here is feeling the same frustration. Jennifer, what you, what's wrong with the place? What's wrong with this place? We're lacking uh, paychecks on time. You know, I'm just realizing this would be a great documentary on why nobody actually wants to work these days. Basically, the first thing out of every person's mouth when asked this is money. It's almost like being paid a livable wage gives you a little more reason to live. Also, being paid on time would probably help. I mean, I, I really don't get why anybody works here. Paycheck? You don't get paid on time either? No. We're missing basic supplies, too. Basic supplies? We don't even have... I mean, Noel purchased guest checks for us today so that uh, we've been using scrap pieces of paper. Oh, so it's not just the kitchen understocked. Robert doesn't know how to stock anything. I'm amazed putting on pants isn't too difficult of a task for him. Unless Avi's helping him with that, which... Ugh. First name is? I'm Ryan Keith. Ryan Keith. So what'd you do? I'm the estate manager here. I do all the maintenance on the house. I've done everything here, though. That's why he likes me to spread out my talents to mm -hmm. try and help anybody wherever they need help. He also just doesn't like being in the hotel doing anything besides eating with his friends. Sorry, I just find it weird that he forgot to mention that part. Robert's basically a parasite to his own business, which is kind of sad when you think about it. How's morale? Not good. <laughs> 
I personally haven't been paid since the 6th of January. Here it is the 1st of February. Please, literally, any worker here, please just walk out. I will literally pay one of you to do it. If you walked up to one of these people and gave them $5, you've given them more money than they got in the last 25 days. I just don't get why anybody is still here. Has Robert just managed to blackmail all of them? Has he got their Snapchats or what? I, I really have no idea what's going on or why anyone would ever step in this building ever again. But I'm going to start wrapping the video up here. As I said before, the like goal is going to be 500, and uh, I'm sure you guys saw I started my Patreon. And I said it in the original post, I don't care what you donate if you at all decide to, but 10% of anything I gain from it, I'm going to start setting aside so I can begin building my charity idea. And I want to do a quick shout out to Anton and Morgan for being my first two Patreon subscribers. And by the way, for the most part, I'm very open to answering messages on there. Obviously, if they start flooding in, it might take me a little time, but I'm going to start setting time aside in my day to start answering messages, just like I do with the comment section. But that's enough plugging for today, and I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. I, I love doing these Juniper In videos, and we'll probably hit the like goal within a couple days. So definitely look forward to a Juniper Inn video next week, and I'll also try to continue on the Mill Street Bistro and Black Pearl sagas. Anyways, try not to do anything too stupid, please keep yourself safe, and until next time, this is Thundros signing off.